Help spread love and feel the joy of giving back. During the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event at Beardmore Subaru, Subaru will donate $250 to the charity of your choice for every new Subaru purchased or leased. The ASBCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels, the National Park Foundation, the Housing Foundation of Sarpy County, or off at Air Force Base's Airman's Attic. Plus, we will give an additional $100 locally to help even more. Go to BeardmoreSubaru.com to learn more. Submit charity selection by 1-12-24. Promotion ends 1-2-24. See Subaru.com for more details. K360 Radio. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a J360 Mini Bite, hosted by J.M. Brady. I am your host, J.M. Brady. Let's get into it, shall we? So, here we are at the end of January, and so far, so... You know what, honestly, January's been kind of a kind of an asshole month, if you really think about it. So many things have happened as of late, and I'm going to be real with you, man, I'm, I'm about sick of January. It's been going too slow in certain aspects. And then in other aspects, you would hope that, you know, I, I don't get it. The first week, we always talk about a new year, new us, but somehow around the time, after that, after the first two weeks, we just start going back into our same old habits, man. You know? And the human race has got a lot of potential to be better, but I don't know what it is. Just don't go for it. Is that the answer to the problem? You know? See, I took a lot of time off so I can go ahead and fix up a few things around here at J360 Productions. And it's going pretty well, but something else happened over the week. An unfortunate accident it took the life of nine people, and two of them was a legend and a legend's child. You know, um, growing up, you know there was a there was Michael Jordan, and then you know some people say Penny Hardaway, but you see, Penny wasn't the real successor. Kobe Bryant was, and you see Kobe Bryant. Like, a lot of people didn't like him because he didn't play in Philly. But, you know, at the same time, I had respect for Kobe when he didn't play in Philly. Because, you see, his dad was a sixer, Jelly Bean Bryant. And what better way to carve out your legacy than to go to, you know, another go to another team on the other side of the country that you can actually build, you know, your whole wealth and everything around. And the man could play some ball. Came out of high school to play ball. And, uh... He was amazing. I mean, sure, he talked trash, but who didn't, right? And not only that, the man had, like, what, 18 different titles, I think? And I'm thinking about it, I'm going off of memory because, you know, y'all should have seen him play. And not only was he great, he had a, he said he had an incredible roster there to back him up. And you see, the unfortunate thing is he was involved in that hillside crash and, you know, as much as the circumstances that of the event keeps coming out, like what he was going to do, he was going to coach, he was going to, you know, mentor a lot of younger, you know, upcoming basketball players. I mean, the guy gave back after he retired, you know. And it's just really, really interesting how, you know, it's, it's just interesting how hard it is that, you see, because we as people, we mourn, you know. And especially when our heroes get caught up in unfortunate circumstances and they pass away, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about death. I know a lot of people are sitting there now just saying, you know, live every day to the fullest. Tell the people that are in your life that, that you love them and show kindness whenever you can because you never know when you're going to leave. We, which are true statements, but one way or another, people need to actually practice this stuff on the daily and not wait until somebody passes away to do so. And you see, my problem with the human race is, is that we do that when, you know, circumstances happen. It's just like this, you know, not everything in life is going to be great for all of us. But at the same time, you know, you want to treat people the way you'd like to be treated. You want to understand that, you know, you're going to go through periods of pain, but hopefully you get up out of them, you know. Different circumstances come to different folks. Some people... Just marinate in trouble. And then one way or another, you think you got out of it, but it'll come find you in a, other different forms. And the unfortunate circumstances of it was is that 
you know, Kobe died, um, him and his daughter died in, in a horrible freak accident. And it's just hard to take, you know, like, where do you go from here? Like, you know, you, you want to give shout outs to the family and where, what they're going through and just hope that they bounce back and just understand like how life is very precious and finite. But I also know this, the mainstream media did not do right by covering this man's death. And not only that, how do you get the term, how do you confuse the term Los Angeles Lakers with the N-word? And we all know the N-word, right? You've, you've heard it. You've seen it. You've, you know, everybody knows about that word. And then what makes it even worse is that the anchor person that tried to, well, not the anchor person. But the reporter that was reporting the story, she tried to cover up what she said by saying nakers. That doesn't make it any better. And please, please don't be those people that are out there running around trying to make this a thing. It's not funny. It's just really, really ignorant. I mean, an error in judgment, yeah. I'm not going to defend mainstream media, especially on something like this. It's like you should know better. If you're covering a story, breaking news or whatever, you should be on it. And, I mean, at the same time, you know, you might not always have it. You know, she might have been a legitimate fan. Who knows? But it's no different than, um, you know, just being ignorant about the situation and just going ahead and saying things that, you know, come to mind. Maybe she had uh, the N-word on the brain. Who knows? But I think she got fired. I think she did. But then again, I, I'm not sure because when you got certain people that, do these things they don't get fired they get transferred they get moved around because there's always somebody covering somebody like that you know and i and i see it all the time uh, oh a, a real real pretty woman says her whole spiel and she's she's apologizing but but at the same time she doesn't get fired she gets transferred somewhere now if it was somebody like me doing that kind of stuff yeah i'd be on my way out i wouldn't have that job anymore I mean, granted, you know, circumstances, uh, oh, there are people out there that like my style of reporting, but at the same time, yeah, Jay, you gotta go, you know, there's no appeal about you, yeah, we're just gonna throw you out. And the truth is, is that, you know, double standards like that apply a lot. However, there was another circumstance, too, over at the Washington Post, reporter, instead of just giving Kobe his you know, his just dues and knowing that everybody around here, you don't, you don't really know the fan base, do you? That's a huge fan base that surrounds Kobe Bryant. I mean, yeah, you, you can look at LeBron and say LeBron has a huge fan base too, but Kobe's fan base was that right mix, man. A whole lot of people love Kobe Bryant and he was starting a production company too. Now that I think about it, the man was going into bigger and better things. In addition to going back to the game he loved. So, and then this woman had the nerve. Instead of just talking about, like, you know, what a great player he was, how he resonated in his community, and how everything was brilliant or coming together for his future plans, or saying that he survived by the descendants or the remaining relatives in his immediate family, she goes on a tangent and she talks about what happened in 2003. Yeah, you know, the rape accusation. She goes ahead and she brings that up. Now, that's just as bad as like when Michael Jackson died and people try to bring up all the controversies about, oh, the child molestations. And then Finding Neverland comes out about, what, three, three years or so after he died? No, 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 not three years ago. It came out last year which Michael died back in 2009, so you figure, like, about 10 years or so? Because that person didn't get a job? Like, you know, it seemed like people have an agenda. Certain people have an agenda. And I'm not trying to be like, you know, ethnicity has a part of this stuff, but I'm just saying that at the end of the day, somebody has died. And all those other things have not been proven. Like, you know, what happened in 2003? He insisted that it was mutual. And not only that, it was settled out of court. He didn't get hit with that label, but this person all of a sudden 
decided to go ahead and throw trash on him. And guess what? After it all came out, people on, in the post were saying that, you know, this kind of goes against integrity. And then her whole tweet, which I can't find now, um, because it was insensitive to Bryant, along with um, little Gigi, who passed away. She said she received abuse, death threats, and checked in a hotel that night fearing for her safety. Once again, isn't it amazing how people will go on these, they'll report these certain situations, they'll drag up stuff from the past, even though it's already been resolved, throw that in front of people, and then got the nerve to start fearing for their safety and lack of judgment behind all the stuff they've done. And that same woman, she was suspended for it. But here's the crazy thing, right? Her suspension has been repealed by somebody else because it, her whole thing did not violate their policy on social media. See, this is where I start to realize more and more that Twitter is a wretched hive. Like, I mean, sure, it helps out with the production of the J-Man show and every other show that I have. I mean, it gets it out there to you all. But how it becomes weaponized and how it becomes used and abused by all the people that are on it in some shape or form, it really kills it. And I can say the same for any social media profile. The, the, this is horrible, man. This is stupid journalism here. This isn't even really journalism like, you know, the integrity. The integrity is gone because of stuff like this. I mean, I could go further to where that person that did the did the article for Rolling Stone at one time accused a whole Yale lacrosse team for allegedly raping someone that didn't exist during, you know, during the in in what was it? It was a it was during um how do you how do you say it? initiation week for the for the um initiation week for the fraternity because it was a frat party and she gave like a half ass apology about it. God, what was her name? But I remember it though. Cause it was, it was a lot of lying going on in there, but because, you know, she had somebody covering for her. She didn't really face the complications and ramifications of her actions. You know, there are certain things you apologize about, but then there are certain things you, you just don't do to people, especially when they're, dead and the world is going through mourning it's just as bad as somebody else making you know going all in doing comedy jokes on a man that's dead and not even in the ground yet you know what i'm saying it's like and then you got other people are like oh you know uh, you know personally you, you might as well get over it. you don't know that you don't know how somebody resonates to somebody else let people mourn the way they're supposed to. Let them grief in their own way. And honestly, if you're just doing this to get some cred, well, you're a selfish, sad piece of crap, man. And it don't make no sense. Why? Because none of your other jokes were funny? You couldn't make fun of anybody else out there? You know how many jerks that are out there just like you, you can make fun of? But you go ahead and you make fun of an icon? Somebody that was giving back to their community while you were trying to make fun of something because, hey, you know what? Instead of actually being funny and making fun of myself, hey, let me just go ahead and try to make fun of a dead man. Freaking pathetic. Going all in on somebody who can't talk back. And that's the problem. We got a lot of punks out there. Really do. Even the ones in mainstream media. But you see the reason why they act the way they do? Because they always got somebody covering for them. Just like that person that went ahead and repealed her whole suspension. Hell, if it was me and if I was the editor, her ass be out. And, I w and before some of you feminists get all up in my grill, I would do the same to a, to a man too. I would. Because it doesn't make any sense. And one way or another, we're all going to have to start accepting responsibility for our actions. And we're going to have to start treating people with respect, especially the dead. Because we're all going to die someday. So I don't know what the hell is wrong with America or what the hell is wrong with the world right now. But we really need to pull our heads out of our behinds. I'm just saying. 
But anyway, you know, that's all I got for the mini bar right now. The J Man Show will be coming along tomorrow. So you just come around here at the same time and we'll get into it, okay? This is the J Man signing off. Peace. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over prohibited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.